In this lecture, we'll finally see a one of, or one of the powerful ways that Kotlin can improve your code when compared to Java. Now, normally we don't actually want to have a fixed text for our card layout here. So let's say we just remove this description and we want to actually set that description programmatically in our main activity. So first of all, we're going to have to get a reference to that text view just to then set the text. And as I mentioned, I'm oftentimes I'm just going to go for the Java way to do things. And then I'm going to improve on that by using it the Kotlin way or using some of Kotlin's features in order to improve the code. Now, unfortunately, many other courses on this topic actually stop at the point where they just use Kotlin completely like Java and they don't actually make any use of the benefits of Kotlin when compared to the Java language. So we're going to do this better in this course. So you're going to see how you can actually write cleaner code with Kotlin. Now the Java way to do this would be to create first a private member variable in our activity. And we can call this, for instance, text view description. And actually we can't even make this a val. We're going to have to make this a var because we'll have to initialize this with some value now. And then later on, we're going to have to assign the actual text view. So this should be of type text view, but we have to initialize this with some value now. So we can only go for null at this point. So we have a nullable type and we also have a mutable variable instead of a val. And this is exactly what you'll see normally in Java code. And it's pretty much also the only way you can do this. And then inside here, you can go ahead and say TV description equals find view by ID. You can get the ID from this R file using R.ID, and then we call this TV description. So this find view by ID here is going to be used in Java code all the time to get all the elements from the layout that you need, and then to put this into this variable here. And in Java code, you'll actually also have to cast the result of find view by ID normally. Here, this is going to refer to find view by ID of a text view, because that's the type of our member variable, TV description. So in Kotlin, we don't need to explicitly define this. And now we can go ahead and say TV description text and set this to, well, I should probably have copied the value or the string here. So I'm going to do this now, switch back to main activity. So here you can see that with Kotlin, we also run into trouble again because this is a nullable field. So whenever we want to actually access this, we're going to have to use the safe call operator. So only if this is not null, then we're going to set the text. Now in other courses, you often see the double exclamation mark used very often. That's already a warning signal or should be a warning signal for you that they just don't really understand how to work with nullables in Kotlin and also just don't know how to avoid nulls in the first place. So here you can simply use the save call operator because, well, this of course shouldn't be null at this point. We have just set it to the view, but it's just not necessary to go for the double exclamation mark because if this is null, then, well, you just don't want to set the text. You just want to set the text here if it's not null. So remember that if this property here is actually null, then this line will just not be executed. And that's, of course, the safe way to do this. All right, so that's completely the Java way to do this. So now let's go ahead and improve this one step by using Kotlin's late init modifier. So this means that this variable here doesn't need to be initialized at this point in time already. So this means we can now get rid of the nullability here. And instead, we can still use our code as before. We just have to make sure to actually set a value to our member variable before using it. So with late in it, we basically say that we're going to initialize this before use. If we don't, we of course run into trouble because, well, we can't use a non-initialized variable. But this is just a nice way in this case to get rid of null. But we still have a var. We can still use a val because we do still set TV description only here in this line. And it's actually not possible with the combination of late init. 
So this is already a lot better than before because we got rid of null in our code. But now in Kotlin there's actually a very nice way to do this even more simply. So when you go back to the build.gradle file for the project, you can see we have this plugin here called Kotlin Android Extensions. And that's gonna automatically go ahead and create member variables that we can simply access in our code without actually doing this ourselves. So the way this was called in our layout XML was tv underscore description. So you can see that's actually available here in our code already. So there's no need for us to actually create a member variable and to clutter our code with, well, when you have 10 properties, so you're gonna have all those up here, then you're gonna to have to initialize all of them in the onCreate method. So it's gonna really clutter up the code with just very simple initialization. And this way here, you can simply go ahead and use all the elements from the layout right away. So you could also see we have TV title, that's also available, we could set some text there. And of course you can also access the image view and then use this in the same way you would with any other image view in Android. For instance, setting the image bitmap. So this is a really nice way to get rid of some of the clutter and boilerplate in your code. And it's also a very safe way to do this. You don't have any trouble with null, you don't have any mutable member variables in your class, and you just got rid of lots of lines of code. But there are also some drawbacks to this approach, because first of all, this is a little bit of magic. So for many people who aren't used to this, it's gonna be unclear where this variable suddenly comes from. Of course, you can always in IntelliJ or Android Studio, just use Control B to go through the declaration and they're gonna see, oh, it's just the ID of the element in the layout. So that's where it comes from. So they're also gonna be able to know how to access other elements like this one, for instance, and it's not gonna be so magic anymore. But at first glance, it's gonna be, well, a little different than what people are used to from the Java world. And also you should of course make sure to use good names in the layout XML. You can also go ahead of course in your layout now and actually use names that follow the coding conventions for Kotlin or Java so that in your code you have a member variable called TV description with camel case so that it fits better into the rest of the code but you may also want to actually stay with the normal XML um, kind of naming things because that way it's also clearer that this is again one of those um, variables that comes actually from the layout. So here in this course I'm actually going to stick to the XML naming so that when you see a variable with an underscore for instance you know immediately that this is coming from the layout. And also I'm going to make use of Kotlin Android extensions in general in order to get rid of all the initialization code just to access all the elements from the XML layout. All right, so again, we made our code much more concise with this. We also made it much safer. We don't have to use null. We don't have to use mutable member variables. And it's just very easy and concise and well, nice to use. So I hope you like this approach using the Kotlin Android extensions. And of course, in the coming lectures, we're gonna see many more instances of how we can make our code cleaner with Kotlin. So I hope you're excited and I'm gonna see you again in the next lecture.